Well, this morning, another signature Cincinnati event, the Flying Pig Marathon, is underway. So in today's U.S. Bank Economic 360, it seemed appropriate to discuss the value of investing for the long run. U.S. Bank Vice President and Senior Portfolio Manager Mike Deniman is with Business Watch producer Kelly Leon in the studio to talk about why it's wise to think of your investments as a marathon rather than a sprint. Guys. Oh, thank you, Peg. Nice segue there. Now, I was, I was hoping for a flying pig tie, but instead we have a jockey tie. Yesterday was the derby. Best I could do was the derby. All right, well, maybe next year you can work on that flying pig tie. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. All right, let's start at the beginning. Um, what does it mean to be a long-term investor? Uh, sure. So, really, it's just exactly how it sounds. You buy securities and you hold them for a, the long term, a period of many years. In fact, it's also called buy and hold <coughs> investing. So the key here is not to look to make the fast buck, but rather to identify stocks that have the potential to do well over many years. Uh, a strong balance sheet, a solid dividend, preferably one that's growing, mm -hmm. good management. All of these are signs of good long-term health for a stock. So. Studies have shown that the difference between earning a very good return on your investments mm -hmm. and only a mediocre one is really pretty narrow. So knowing that your margin for error is so slim, if you can look to remove things that eat away at return over time, things like taxes mm -hmm. and transaction costs, uh, you really can help yourself in the long run. And that's where the buy and hold investing really comes in. So when you're looking at your total portfolio, how do the gains and costs measure up to this or weigh in on this? Exactly. So. Um, you know, again, if that margin for error is so slim, you really need to work to avoid putting yourself at a disadvantage. So an obvious one, always taxes. Anytime you sell an investment that's gone up in value, mm -hmm. the government's going to want a piece of your profit. Uh, so, you know, the way to keep the government off your profits <laughs> is not to sell. That tax only comes into play when you're selling. So if you're not selling, if you're holding for the long term, you avoid the taxes. And really the tax code helps to encourage that as well. The, the government gives you a break, a better rate, if you hold for at least a year or more. So there's an incentive to hold for at least 12 months. Um, and then cost. We talked about transaction costs mm -hmm. or what uh, are commonly referred to as commissions. Anytime you buy or sell, you're going to pay a commission. Now, granted, these are much lower today than they were historically, thanks a great deal to online trading. Mm -hmm. But still, even if that cost is small, if you're trading all the time, they begin to add up. And that, again, erodes your return. So how do you avoid that? Well, you don't trade. You, again, hold for the long term. OK, so the opposite of this long term, it, I guess, would be the day traders. Is that right? Um, that, yes. And yeah. <laughs> so let me ask about that. Sure. Well, everybody does. Um, and you're right. It's the antithesis of, of long term investing. This idea of day trading became popular back in the 90s with the, the tech bubble, this idea of people trading very rapidly uh, over the course of days or even hours trying to profit on short-term swings in the market. So uh, we know that, of course, the market can be very unpredictable, hard to know what it's going to do from day to day, let alone hour to hour. So certainly there are some that make a nice living doing day trading, but there are far more who have tried it and found that it's very difficult. And in fact, not only is it not a, a quick way to, to get rich, but also can put a pretty big dent in your portfolio. So again, we try to emphasize that long-term mm -hmm. investing. It's, it's not flashy, but uh, sometimes slow and steady wins the race. And I'm sure you'd rather be out running the marathon this morning, but thank you for being here with us and helping us. If not running, at least cheering them on. <laughs> yeah, you're so selfless. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. We so appreciate you and U.S. Bank.